Hey, it's Jen Vax with YourColorStyle.com, and this is part two of a three-part series, and we are talking about contrast. Yesterday, we talked about contrast in terms of value, the difference between a light and dark color, and how that can be applied to the patterns that you wear, the clothes that you choose, the makeup you choose, and how those clothes and patterns impact you with regards to contrast and value. Today we're going to talk about contrast, but in this case we're going to talk about chroma. So a lot of us don't consider this, and this is this topic is near and dear to my heart because it's one of the reasons why I say when you're thinking about and learning about the colors, the types of colors that are going to be in most harmony with you, that are going to flatter you the most, chroma is really important. Now, I've had people disagree with me and they don't believe that that is the number one thing because a lot of people are kind of in the middle. And I get that. You can, I'm, I'm kind of in between sometimes too. But I still think that it's important to understand chroma and how it can impact the types of colors that you wear. Because once you get this, you're going to start to quickly identify the types of colors that aren't going to suit you as, be as well as others. It's just the way it is, but it doesn't mean you can't wear them. So when I talk about chroma, when it comes to contrast, it is the difference of how muted something is against something that is bright. So I'm a fine artist, and one of the th tricks that you can do when you are I wouldn't say tricks, but techniques that you can do to add interest to a painting, for example, is to make sure that you have a point of contrast between a muted background and maybe a pop of color. And that moment of contrast between the chroma is where your eye will go. This is a great thing to, and fun thing to practice when you're pulling outfits together because you have control over where you want the person's eye to go. So if you are wearing something that's all neutral, like I'm wearing this neutral sweater right now, everything about me is fairly neutral, I can decide now what do I want stand out. I Maybe I have a fun pair of red shoes, then they will pop because that's exactly where your eye will go when you put bright next to um, muted. I could wear bright red lipstick and choose for that to be the focal point. I highly recommend you don't do this all over the place. You just, just you do this in a, a, a purposeful way as a fun way to, to draw attention. But another way to think about this too is that if you are someone that has very bright hair, say bright red hair, well, this might explain why wearing something that's very muted and grayed may not feel as good as wearing a brighter color or maybe even a darker color because the difference between your bright red hair and the muted colors is too great. And it's just, it's basically, um, it just, it just might just feel off. But what it will do though, is it will draw attention straight to your hair. If you wear a brighter color next to your bright hair, the balance is a little bit more there, creating more of a, um, holistic look, and maybe your hair is not is no longer the spotlight. Again, it's your choice. I'm kind of giving you these ideas to realize that you can have some fun with this. So I have here in my hand two cards. This is the khaki green from the, one of the color fans. This is in the warm color fans, and it's a muted olive green. And then I have here a peach pink, which is a bright pink. Now, when you wear these together, what's going to stand out is the pink. It's going to jump forward. The brightest thing in your outfit often is what's going to move, is going to come forward, and things that are darker or more muted are going to start to fade back. Okay? So if you want anything to be more of a showpiece than on your outfit, you make that thing a little bit brighter. You increase the contrast between that thing and its background. If you think of yourself overall as kind of the background, what do you want to stand out? Sometimes people choose to wear a really, really bright uh, dress. I wore a red jumpsuit the other day um, on, my, on my trip to this party 
because I wanted the dress to stand out. I mean, I wanted me to stand out, but I wanted the dress to stand out too. Again, it's a choice. If you don't want your outfit to stand out, you want your makeup and your hair to stand out, make sure you pay attention to where the point of contrast is. If, you, you know, you're, if you've got red, beautiful red lips, um, you could do a red jumpsuit, but now there's no, you've lost that focal point. If you wanted to jump out, you'd wear something more muted and do those red lips, and now your lips are the focal point. Do you see my point? So that is a type of contrast. Now, back to color analysis for a moment to bring this all back around again to why I'm talking about this to begin with, because I, I originally started out with talking about harmony. Color analysis and finding the right clothes, the right patterns, the right contrast, all those things that are going to make you feel good and pull together has everything to do with how harmonious everything is. So if you have, if you are someone that is low in contrast like me, nothing's really that bright. Well, my hair was really bright pink last week, but it's fading. So naturally it's not that bright. Then for me, wearing something that is um, really, really bright, that's going to stand out. It might overpower me a little bit because I'm not that bright. However, even though I'm not a, I'm not a painted piece of paper, if I wear something that's more grayed out on me, it may not feel right because I need some balance of brightness. Um, because that's just my overall coloring and what I need. Now, by the way, I'm normally I mean, in your color style, I'm bright, warm, and light. So I need some of the brighter colors, but not necessarily the intense bright colors, okay? If you are someone that is soft, just say you've got soft gray hair, softer eyes, everything in general about your coloring is soft, wearing a bright uh, top, it, this is why it, it, it may not feel right. It's going to just kind of bounce off of you. It's going to just jump out, and that's what you're gonna see first. In most cases, that may not be what you were hoping for, and that, but that's what's happening. I want you to make. I want to make sure you understand why these things are happening, so that you can decide. Is this, Are you still okay with the fact that that's all you see is the top? Maybe that's what you want. But if you're looking for more harmony, you would in that case find something that's a little bit more softer, so that it starts to blend in. Okay, so I hope that helps. I know I don't have a lot of visuals on this video. Um, there's a lot that's in the course for Color Mastery. So we're actually talking about contrast right now, this week in Color Mastery with a lot of slides and photos and everything. This is really just to introduce a topic to you so you can start thinking about it. But if you wanna join us over in Color Mastery, I'll leave a link somewhere um, near this video so you can just you can come on over and join us as well. I'm Jen Vax and I will see you tomorrow for part three. Thanks for watching.